All right, so we're definitely making some progress here. Um, a lot of things have gone right. Um, so what's going to happen next? Well, we just had uh, this uh, nucleophile here uh, attack um, the carbonyl, and that left us with a negative charge on this oxygen. That left us with a negative charge uh, on this uh, oxygen over here. And what usually happens if you're left with a charge after your main reaction? If you're left with a charge after your main reaction, commonly you get rid of that by protonating or deprotonating. Um, so the next thing you do is just to protonate this oxygen over here. Should you not protonate that with the MAOH, but instead protonate it with the H that's already on the OH? This one over here? Yeah. Um, you could do it either way. But yeah, it would be elegant to use this hydrogen uh, over here. You could do it either way. It I doesn't really matter. Like if you didn't do that, then how are you going to deal with that double bond? Sure. Well, here's how. So um, let's say we just protonate this from the solvent, basically. You just protonate it from the solvent. Actually, uh, yeah, so we'll protonate it from the solvent. Maybe it's a little bit better to use the solvent. Remember that in the first step, one of these guys um, stole a proton. One of the methoxides stole a proton, and that made it into an MeOH. But this is supposed to be catalytic, so it should give the proton back at this step. Otherwise, it's not really catalytic. Um, I, I think you'd probably get full credit either way, but it's a little more elegant to regenerate the catalyst, since he told us it was the catalyst here. Okay, so that would give us uh, this over here. All right, now, this is a special type of functional group over here. Well, what would we call this type of functional group here with the HO and the double bond? Enol? Yeah, this is an enol, right? Not an enolate, yeah. but an enol. An enolate um, is this formation where we have a negative charge on the alpha carbon, or the resonance form where the negative charge is on the oxygen over here. Enolate has the charge, but an enol is the neutral form. So here's the enol. Uh, that, that's a very logical name, right? Because what does ene stand for? The double bond. Double bond, like an alkene. And all stands for alcohol. the alcohol. So an enol is just an alcohol on a double bond. OK, so this is an enol, alcohol on a double bond. Uh, and we want to get this to look like this. Well, there's a name for the reaction that turns a enol into a carbonyl. Do you guys know what the name of that reaction is that turns an enol into a carbonyl? That's tautomerization. Tautomerization. Um, tautomerization is the process by which carbonyls turn into enols and enols turn back into carbonyls. Tautomerization is the equilibrium reaction by which carbonyls turn into enols or the reverse where enols turn into carbonyls. Okay. Uh, so that's why we're not going to be too worried about getting this to look like this, because that's one of our standard reactions over here, turning a enol into a carbonyl. Okay, I guess this gives us a chance to review the mechanism for that. Okay, so um, what should happen first here? Remember, this is base catalyzed. The electrons from the oxygen go down and kick the... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that would make sense, except that this is base catalyzed, which means that the base should come in first. Since this is base catalyzed, so, tautomerization can be either acid catalyzed or base catalyzed. Um, if it's acid catalyzed, the first thing you should do is a protonation. And if it's base catalyzed, the first thing you should do is a deprotonation. So we can take So the first thing we're going to do is a deprotonation. Remember that uh, we just regenerated our catalytic base from the previous step. All right. Uh, and, and like you guys said previously, if you'd wanted to, you could have just used this oxygen to kick this off and deprotonate this oxygen over here. I, either way, I think would be fine. Uh, I think either way would be fine. So um, anyway, we're going to deprotonate this. I don't feel like drawing this whole picture over every time. So I'll just put the negative charge on the oxygen. Okay. And that, of course, gives us methanol again. So that puts this negative charge over here. All right, and now we can do what you wanted to do and have the electrons come kicking down. But now there's even more reason for them to kick down because there's a negative charge uh, over here. So we do the uh, kicking down business like this, right? Can it grab the hydrogen off of the O and E? Yeah, we, know, like we can do that in one there. step. So this hydrogen just went on the LME in the previous step, and now it can come kicking back off. And again, regenerate our catalyst. We have to keep regenerating the catalyst uh, over here. And I think that's going to get us to the product that we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then we'd be done. Perfect. All right. And then we wanted to do D, right? All right. Tried it. Should we double check the answer? Is that, oh. missing anything? Is that, is that right? Uh, that was a lot of There's steps. There's no 229B. Oh, from before. Yeah. So this. In, uh, then this came up. 
Yeah, so in the book, he actually did use the oxygen to deprotonate. Yeah. So um, the way I did it was fine, but this would be fine too. And then we had this. Okay, now before we go on, let's just review this. So this was a pretty, uh, pretty huge problem right here. Um, most important was, more, more than ELH or anything, the only way to do a problem like this is with the numbering. Now, like, like I have to admit, sometimes you can't number. Sometimes it's not clear what the, what the carbons are, but you have to give it a try. Uh, and again, oftentimes there are landmarks that help you uh, to do that. And the other thing is, the more you practice numbering, the better you're going to get. So you have to be reconciled that the first time you're doing it, it's going to be really hard and confusing, but you're never going to get better unless you practice that. The numbering was very helpful here to see that this is the alpha carbon that's participating in the reaction, because this is the carbon that's forming a new bond. And it also tells us who is it, who is it attacking. It's attacking the number seven, because we can see that from the numbering over here. So this problem is almost impossible without the numbering, even though I admit that the numbering is hard in itself. Okay. You want to um, 229D. Okay. Also, uh, watch out for enols. Anytime you see an enol, think tautomerization. So you will see this on the exam. Watch out for enols. Uh, if there's an enol, there's an excellent chance he wants you to tautomerize it. Remember, that can be either acid or base catalyzed. So it's very easy for that to tautomerize either acid and base. I didn't say we could use acid catalyzed in this case, okay. but in general, tautomerization could be either acid catalyzed or base catalyzed. Um, if it's acid catalyzed, the first thing that happens is that the base takes the hydrogen off of the oxygen. Then if it's acid catalyzed, uh, the first thing that happens is, uh, is the first thing that happens? Um, uh, I think the first thing that happens is that the carbon over here protonates. Okay. I, I guess we haven't right seen now. that yeah. much. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, if he hasn't gone over that, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so part D. Uh, 